Hey everybody, how y'all doing? Are you hey okay? In your neck of the woods? What up? What up? Manners and respect, man. I your girl, Debbie from Donga Yard. Welcome you all to the Jamaican kitchen. Welcome once more to the Jamaican cooking journey. And if you're new right on over here, you know it's a special welcome to you. And also thank you for making it West India and the likes. Old time, long time. But then if I'm long time, you don't know it now. Manners and respect, see? Now today, what I'm gonna do for you, I'm gonna do for you a fried pork chops recipe. This fried pork chops recipe is gonna be my way. Fried pork chops, Debbie Dunga Yard way. We're gonna season these pork, slices or whatever. We're going to make a, a batter and we're also going to make a dry rub. But what I want to do first and foremost, I want to get the batter made ahead of time. So I'm going to put, I'll leave for you in the description in case you want to share my way. I'll leave for you the recipe in the description. So I'm going to be putting in some all purpose flour. I want to make like a little like a batter, no more than something like a um with the consistency of pancake. The very first time, the very first time, and I was trying to pull it and I said, let me stop. I'm gonna use a little cornstarch. I, this is the very first time. I do use cornstarch, but very rare, every now and then, okay? I want, I, some of the times when I do have to use, I use like the potato starch, but I did not get any so i'm using some cornstarch as we go along on this recipe i'll tell you what the cornstarch is for okay and family i'm sorry my light just dim for whatever the reason with me um me um electricity provider them just decide for dim my light and mash up my stuff anyway let's proceed i'm gonna put to this one heaping or eat tablespoon of cornstarch I'm gonna be using two eggs and the egg is totally optional you don't have to but I'll tell you as I go along what the egg is for so I'm gonna be beating these two eggs not really just lightly and I'll be putting it in there. To this, I want to add some water. Maybe the same amount like what the two eggs gave me. But let's see how it goes. So you're going to be whisking this into a smooth batter. This look like it's okay, like, yeah. Smooth butter with that more like of a pancake consistency. When you hold it, you see like it, like a rib on the light. Okay, we're gonna leave that there. Now that we have done that, we are gonna get these out of the way. These are the boys that we'll be working on. You want to get yourself some pork chops, pork slices. You can use bone in, you can use bone out. Do what pleases you. And it seems as if I, I was not ready for summer, but I might can use this now. If you get it with the skin on, you, I'm going to go ahead and remove the skin and mostly like the fat. So I'm going to start like, not definitely at the, the right here but i want to leave a little of the fat on so i want to do we're going like this so you want to leave a little moisture because this skin here we don't know the birthday of the animal that we got these pork chops from you see so we don't we're not gonna use the the skin you see, it's, the skin is always the most chewy part. 
I remember we're gonna fry okay so like these parts you can take them off you can remove these parts I'm just gonna do one to show you okay leave a little of these in there because you're gonna fry you don't want them coming too dry so you're gonna if you have a meat tenderizer so you want you're trying to get the meat all tenderized so if you have the meat I don't have one at the moment so we're poking small holes all over in them now I'm gonna go ahead do the same I have two more to them okay and you know the now next patient same treatment so I'll do this I'm gonna go ahead go off camera now do as I did to this with the others and we will come back we're going to season this pork chops leave it to marinate you'll see how we do it when we return okay family because my light went dim with a little power out it slightly i got distracted i was supposed to put in oh lord i was supposed to put in one tablespoon of baking powder and i got distracted and i did not remember so let me do it right now into this butter here we'll leave for you in the description okay so you're gonna whisk it out properly let it properly whisk out now we have gone ahead and we have either our own little tenderizing and as i say you have your equipment or your little gadgets kitchen gadgets that tenderizes you can go ahead and use it okay so you want to have it look like this i hope you are not you don't have phobias if you have phobia i might want to click off with these small holes you want to get it look like this and they must be big and broad like this now what we want to do we want to season this pork so we're going to start by grating some garlic we're going to grate some ginger yes this is fresh pork you need a lot of ginger and you also need a lot of garlic i'll be using more garlic but i'm just showing you what i'll be using right now Gratering off our garlic or ginger and our garlic. This is like three pounds. Okay, so you need to adjust your ginger and your garlic to your liking. For me, my fresh pork must have been lots and lots of garlic, lots and lots of ginger. That's for me because I know that's what pork calls for. So I'm grating my garlic and I'm not clicking off. If you want to click off, you might want to do so. Some people really don't care to see some of these. No problem. Each to his own according to my brother Amaru. Okay, so you want to do it, you do it. And you can use your garlic powder, your ginger powder, but fresh garlic and ginger. It's always better. Better flavor. Okay? Better result, better everything. Right here I have some scallions i'm gonna just be beating them i don't want them finer than this so i'm just gonna be like smashing it out to get the flavor and i'm gonna put it here it's gonna be messy but this is how kitchen goes so right here i have some this is old cloves beated old cloves into powder i am using this to substitute for pimento okay i have a little celery powder no, this is yes and i also have some cumin this is what i'm using you can use your seasoning of choice okay i'm gonna be putting in probably about a few dashes of worcestershire sauce and this has some salt in it so you got so you got to be careful how you use it as you go along now i'm gonna be putting in a little bit of a salt remember the worcestershire it has in salt so you be careful how much salt you use this is three pounds okay i think that does the trick for what i'm using and i say you can use what you want i'm using this bag because i don't have any more of my other bags and my gloves i'm allergic to the old clothes and the pimento so i've got to use this so we are gonna go now rubbing in our meat give us a little break you know to marinate your meat 
and we'll return and show you what we are gonna do after we finish rubbing these seasoning that I'm using into here our soon to be fried pork chops okay we have finished rubbing in these spices and stuff into our pork now this is the batter this batter I put I put in there some cornstarch I put two eggs I told you the eggs can be optional and I put some baking powder along with a little all-purpose flour now this butter here with the cornstarch and the baking powder also with the egg is to give this some moisture and also to enhance with extra tenderizing of the meat and I should have said from the beginning choose good gently sorry not gently juicy young meat don't choose the meat that is so red choose the meat that is of light pink we're not when cook it down we're just gonna fry it okay so you need to tenderize it properly it's put it one bit brown and cook down so you need to get it tenderized so now we're gonna be pouring in this batter gently all over it Now, you're also going to use your hand to rub in this butter. Mine is going to be a little messy but because I didn't get to close my bag. But this is the idea. Okay. Let me go finish. You get the idea of what I'm going to be doing? From side to side over with this butter in this. And when we return... The next move or the next part or whatever is next. You'll see it, okay? Okay, everybody in. My hands have been washed. Everybody in at this mixture. Yeah, they so them look bossy. They are married. They are being tender. They are gonna. Go, they are being tenderized to another level in this. Now you're gonna cover this with some plastic wrap. Hey, hello. Let me tell you something. Let me all say something to you. Let me tell, let me tell you something. This is a Jamaican. When I say let me tell you something. Who know the pattern know what I'm talking about? Let me tell you something. This is your kitchen. This is mine. But wherever you are, it's your kitchen. If you don't have no plastic wrap and you have a clean plastic bag that as the, 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 can cover it, wash it dry it and cover it. You don't have to have plastic wrap, okay? This is a real thing because if I never have none of this, I swear to God out your plastic bag and cover it. This is a real thing. So you're going to cover your thing with your wrap. Because you don't must have none. You don't must have. Eh? So if you don't have none of nothing, because I don't like that it's a part of the recipe. It's not a part. So you're going to cover this. And you're going to leave it. Best result, if it's left overnight, to marinate in your fridge. Probably down at the bottom for 24 hours. Or to... You're going to leave it in this marinade or marinade, whatever. Please correct me in the comment section. I am two dumps. So we're going to leave it in the refrigerator now to let it soak for overnight. But this won't be overnight. That's for the, when, you, when you leave it overnight, you'll get the best result. I'm going to leave this about an hour. So we will come back after an hour time. No, we'll come back before an hour to show you something. But after an hour, definitely you'll see what is going to happen so you cover it all covered you can make sure it's properly covered because if you don't cover it properly all these flavors it will trap inside of your fridge and the rest of food them are going to absorb it okay okay now family whilst that is in there in the refrigerator we are going to prepare a dry rub ahead of time i have here some refined cornmeal and some all-purpose flour you want to have like the cornmeal more than the flour you want to get more like a you know a little color to this i'm gonna put some paprika and if you have smoked paprika it would be even better i leave for you in case you want to use my my recipe in the description this is some coriander crushed coriander seeds and i'm putting it in there please to tell me in the description in the comment section i'm sorry what you know about coriander and pork Tell me if you know a thing about coriander and pork, tell me. I have here some chili powder and I'm putting in a little too. I'll tell you 
the measurements in the description and also we are gonna add a little salt to this this is the dry rub so let us try to put it together and then when you put it together you will have an idea of the color that you will have when you rub your pork in there okay so we put in the paprika i leave everything for you this is what it, you want it to look like so we're, you don't have to put this in the refrigerator you're just getting everybody you know mixed in and leave it there to let it you know always best to do things like these at a time and leave it there okay so when we return our pork chop should be ready and you see oh we have a proceed okay family so we took out you know you have to take out your pork chops at a time probably about a 15 minutes or 20 and let it come back to room temperature so you also have to remove the scallions okay please to remember that you have also got to remove the scallions no scallion so you're gonna put it into your dry rub and you're gonna proceed to pat it onto it gently and ah uh, i'm gonna leave for you in the description i was supposed to put some breadcrumbs i did it off camera in the dry rub so i tell you say that like that chip it did everything to my brain so you want to you know if it's if yours are broad like this you want to have a wide container because you want to get this dry rub all pressed onto this thing here okay so this is what we are going to do we are going to press let me show you how we do one i don't have to show you all three because you know it is the next patient type it in the comment section same treatment so i'm just going to show you gently how you do this press it on to your pork chops now please to shake gently and thoroughly the excess dry rub you're gonna leave it on somewhere wide you're gonna leave it in separate containers since this is so big you're gonna leave it there for about 15 minutes to let this dry rub set onto this here with all of this niceness we are gonna go now do the same give these two the other treatments remember to remove all scallions and when you return you'll see well let me say you're supposed to have a skillet as wide as this if you're if you're as, as broad as mine so we have some extra garlic in there so we are going to leave it to preheat so when we return you're going to see what's going to happen okay my three pork chops have all been um dry rubbed off and they're there this is the first one and this is all the crunch on it is supposed when it fries this is all you have it crunchy now i've got over here eat your oil on medium and fry all the way through on medium we have gotten the flavor out of these garlic so we can't take them out we don't want them burn so remember medium so we're gonna put in our first one now gently no look at this y'all excess there's no extra because it will burn so you're gonna be gently away from you do not hurt yourself please in a medium eat on a medium eat and you're gonna be frying from one side to another we want to get it golden pretty crispy and nice so when we are ready to flip we'll return and we'll show you our pork chops look like okay okay family we have just flipped this and this is how it looks now it's not properly cooked look at my family what i want you to be doing each time it reaches like this you need to be turning it from side to side you don't wait until it burn on one side you're gonna be turning it from side to side allowing it to cook evenly while it's frying it's frying and the, the method is the frying method is the cooking method so you don't leave it on one side to burn okay you turn it from side to side this frying process you're gonna have to be turning it from side to side allowing the juices to stay in there while it's frying so you don't let it fry too much on one side so as soon as you see you know the other side might all reach like this you, you just turn it it's not ready though so you're gonna turn it because you don't want it coming burn and you don't want when it come out it is not juicy so whilst you turn it you just press it down a little use don't use a fork use a 
um, this is a tongue. So you can you see what is happening? Why is it frying? It's shrinking. Yes, let me grab some or put in there. Okay. So you let it fry on the medium and turn it from side to side until you get the desired. You will know when it's cooked. You know it doesn't take long. Remember, it has been tenderized. So we are gonna go do all of this, and when we return, we are gonna do just one for camera. Okay? I will show you how it looks. Okay? When we return, we should be ready to present to you fried family so we'll be removing it from the oil and we'll be leaving it on a wire rack to let it stay there we're gonna leave it for 10 minutes let all the juices extra juices drip and what doesn't drip remain in there whilst it stays there and get you know let everything just remain in there let everything just come down together we're right over here we're um, preparing a sauce to smother over it that is for who would like to smother we are not going to be demonstrating but we'll be leaving the ingredients or the recipe for the sauce in case anybody wants to use it you can if you don't want to you can make your sauce we're not a big on a bread and a jamaican cooking journal can make on a sauce but we'll be leaving the recipe for this sauce in the description so we're going to leave it let the juices rest return and present okay y'all okay now family our pork chop has been all the juices have dripped from it and you can see it what we're gonna do now i want to taste for you i want to take piece out for you because i want you to see that it's properly cooked but before i let, i think i should present before i do that okay so what you want to do now you want to do what you want to do this is the sauce that we have made you want to drizzle oh you want to drizzle your sauce do as much as you want okay this is the sauce that we have made and as you can see we were doing three so we have enough sauce for the three so let me present to you from my kitchen to yours from my jamaican kitchen to wherever you are it's fried pork chops my way fried pork chops debit on a yard way if you have liked this video please remember to give it a thumbs up thumbs up thumbs up thumbs up remember to share with whoever you want to and remember also to subscribe when you do subscribe remember to hit that bell if you not hit the bell if you're not click on the bell you will not be informed of my next upload you don't want to miss this and if you want to be a member of our post notification crew all you've got to do after you hit the bell leave your comments below and today camera girl post notification shout out goes to joshua gabriel joshua gabriel it is quite evident it's quite clear that he is on the jamaican cooking journey joshua big up yourself i wish you, uh, you are here for me to serve you some of these fried pork chops. Once more, from my Jamaican kitchen to yours, it's fried pork chops. Please do enjoy. 